So, we had started with one consistent set of propositions sigma, then we could extend it to sigma prime which we proved to be maximally consistent. So, this fact that a consistent set can be extended to a maximally consistent set is called Lindenbaum lemma. So, that may not happen in every system, in this system it happens. So, that means Lindenbaum lemma holds in P C. So, next uh, we had proved some of the properties of sigma prime this maximally consistent set which essentially captures the connectives. So, those four last four properties one for negation that either P or not P uh, belongs to sigma prime for any proposition P and then the other three for the implications. So, those properties if a set holds in a set if those three four properties hold then you would say that that set is a Hintika set. So, there are many technicalities there. So, that means we have proved that there exists a Hintika set which is which happens to be our maximally consistent set sigma prime. So, we are almost over in proving the completeness of P C. So, our formulation was uh, if sigma is consistent then it should be satisfiable right. Okay. So, what about sigma prime? Sigma prime is consistent. Can we show that it is satisfiable? In fact, that is the technique. That is why we had extended sigma to sigma prime. And that sentence, that statement which says that if sigma is consistent, it is also satisfiable, is called model existence theorem. There exists a model for a consistent set. Okay. So, this is what we want to derive next. So, this says if sigma is consistent, then it has a model. I will say that then sigma is satisfiable. So, its proof is easy now. What we have to do is find a model for sigma. Okay. So, now here only we are connecting P C to P L consistency is a PC concept, it is coming out of the proofs, definition of proofs and satisfiability from the semantics, truth and falsity, there we are connecting now. So, what we do is let sigma be consistent, then consider sigma prime. Now, sigma prime is maximally consistent. and it along with it, it satisfies all those properties. Now, what happens? You define one function, define some function i from the set of all propositions. So, now in the set of all propositions, we do not have those connectives and or if and only if and then we do not have top and bottom also, right. There is no not these symbols in P C, that is our set of prop now which is appropriate to P C. So, define from this set to 0 1 a function by taking i of any proposition say u equal to 1 if u belongs to sigma prime it is 0 otherwise. Okay. Now, is it not obvious that this i is a model of sigma prime? It is because by definition it is 1, but we have to verify that it is really a Boolean valuation. It is a function that is fine, but it has to be a Boolean valuation in order that it is a model. That is why we have done all this work. Okay. Now, it should be obvious that it is also a Boolean valuation because of those four properties. If you take any proposition u, either u is in sigma prime or not u is in sigma prime, right. So, either it is given 1 or it is given 0 with respect to the negative sign, negation sign. And what about other properties? The other three properties capture the implications, right. If q belongs to sigma prime that is if i of q equal to 1, 
then p implies q belongs to sigma prime. So, i of p implies q equal to 1, right? That is first property of implication. Next, you have if not p belongs to sigma prime, that is if p is given the truth value 0, then p implies q is also given the truth value 1, it belongs to sigma prime, right? That is the next property of implication. Then you see that if p is true, q is false, that is if p belongs to sigma prime and q does not belong to sigma prime, then p implies q should be false, that is also true, p implies q does not belong to sigma prime, that is your last property, right. So, now we just see from this that i is a Boolean valuation. due to last four properties. What are they? 5 to 8, right? Of sigma prime. Now, that is all, that is the end of the proof, right? So, I is a model of sigma prime and sigma is a subset of sigma prime, so I is a model of sigma, right? I satisfy sigma prime, sigma is a subset of sigma prime, so I is a model of sigma. So, easy consequence now, once you did sigma prime there is nothing to prove and thereby we have also proved adequacy of P C to P L, is in fact strong adequacy, right. So, let us mention that. So, adequacy really means what? Sigma enters W if and only if sigma semantically enters W. This is your strong adequacy. And if you do not have strongness, you say W is a theorem if and only if W is valid without any sigma. So, proof is easy because this is this holds if and only if sigma union not w is inconsistent okay? and this holds if and only if sigma union not w is unsatisfiable and now consistency and satisfiability are on par. Right? Model existence theorem says one part, soundness theorem says the other part. Right? In fact, adequacy means soundness plus completeness, both the things are there. Is that clear? So, there is a nice consequence of it. So, it says something like uh, you start with one infinite set. Okay? Now, suppose that it is unsatisfiable, then you can show that there exists a finite subset of it which is unsatisfiable. That is what compactness means. Right, which means same construction will prove it, but we do not have to prove it once more because we have adequacy, right? And in PC, we have finiteness, so immediately you can jump. Hmm? So, if you want to see what this says, it looks simple now after all this, but it is not a very simple concept. Suppose you start with one infinite set, right? Infinite set of propositions. Now you take all its finite subsets, right? Suppose we claim that each of the finite subsets has a model, right? Can you construct a model for the whole infinite set? This is the problem. Hmm? Do you see it? See, as a particular uh, case, suppose you have sigma, which have w 1, w 2, w 3 and so on. Now, for w 1 you have a model, for w 1, w 2 you have a model, w 1, w 2, w 3 also have a model and so on, right. 
but not only this we are assuming something more we are assuming every finite subset of it has a model now how to construct a model for the whole set the clue is when you say that every finite set subset has a model it is not necessarily the same model it is not the same i right it can be different i it need not be an extension from a subset to a superset of it it can be completely different still from that you can always construct one model for the whole infinite set that is what compactness says right so let's write that compactness for pl this is let sigma be an infinite set uh, if each finite set of sigma is satisfiable then sigma is satisfiable. So, now proof is easy what you have to say is proof its contraposition if sigma is unsatisfiable then there exists a finite subset of sigma which is unsatisfiable. Okay. Which finite subset we do not know but we can show there exists one. So, suppose sigma is unsatisfiable then by strong completeness theorem or model existence whatever you take we want only completeness here you see that sigma is also consistent. Now, you are trading between P L and P C. So, if sigma is satisfiable then sigma is also consistent right. Similarly, if sigma is unsatisfiable it is also inconsistent. Okay. Now, suppose sigma is inconsistent. So, that means sigma entails p, sigma entails not p for some proposition p. Okay. Now, again you trade between p c and p l. You say sigma semantically entails p, sigma semantically entails not p, okay. but wait a bit from the p c itself when you say it entails you have a proof of it. right? but the proof contains only a finite number of propositions. Okay. So, both the proofs have only finite number of propositions each. So, their union is also a finite subset of sigma. Now, you concentrate on that finite subset and trade between P c and P l. So, call that sigma 0 which is union of all the premises used in both the proofs right? or either of the proofs rather right? you have to take the union. Then sigma 0 entails P sigma 0 entails not P semantically sigma 0 is unsatisfiable that is the proof clear. See all the properties are not compact properties that is why it becomes non trivial. For example, suppose in natural numbers uh, you take any finite subset of natural numbers you will have a maximum right, but the whole set natural number does not have a maximum. Okay. So, taking maximum is not a compact property but here it is satisfiability is a compact property that is what it says. Okay, that is why it becomes non trivial though in P c it very trivial because our definition is through a finiteness property a proof is a finite sequence. So, that is why when you say P c and P l are adequate it gives some more information it is not just I have started with some axioms and proved it. Okay. Fine, we if we get some time we will do some applications of compactness right now we will not huh? we will resist the temptation. Okay. <coughs> See in P c what happens we are we are looking at the proofs now construction of proof is not effective as we have seen right, but we have not proved it why it is not effective all that we have seen from our experience that the idea of proof notion of proof is effective you can always check whether some, some sequence of proposition is a proof or not, but how to construct a proof depends on your uh, cunningness right. It is not mechanical okay. 
कैन यू हैव ए मैकेनिकल मेथड समथिंग लाइक दैट रिजोल्यूशन वाज समवट मैकेनिकल फाइन बट यू नीड ए सी एन एफ कन्वर्सन दैट इज अगेन मैकेनिकल सो दैर इज ए होप मैकेनिकली समथिंग कैन बी डन राइट एंड इट इज मैकेनिकल फ्रॉम द बिगनिंग सपोज यू हैव ए फाइनाइट सेट ऑफ प्रपोजिशन यू कैन ऑलवेज फाइंड आउट वेदर इट इज कन्सिस्टेंट और इनकन्सिस्टेंट मैकेनिकली बे वेरी क्रूड प्रोसीजर कंस्ट्रक्ट इट्स ट्रूथ रेबल राइट इट्स वेरी लॉन्ग इट डज इन मैटर देर एक्जिट्स ए मेथड ओके सो दैट दैट कन्सेप्ट इज कल डिसाइडेबिलिटी ऑफ ए थियोरी सो इन प्रोफेसनाल लजिक द थिंग इज डिसाइडेबल वेदर समथिंग इज कन्सिस्टेंट और इनकन्सिस्टेंट इज डिसाइडेबल प्रोवाइडेड यू हैव ए फाइनाइट सेट ओके फॉर इनफाइनाइट सेट्स यू डोंट नो फॉर टू डू ओके नाउ विल सी दैट देर इज स्टिल देर आर स्टिल सम अदर मेथड्स हुई कैन बी वेरी इजी एंड विल प्रेजेंट वन सच मेथड इन फैक्ट द मेथड इज सो इजी एंड सो इंटिव एट द सेम टाइम इट इज सो फॉर्मल दैट लॉजिशियंस बिकम एडिक्टेड टू इट वंस यू से वेदर दिस इज कन्सिडेंट एंड नॉट इमिडिएटली दे विल गो फॉर दैट ओके यस विल सी वाई इज इट सो सी इट्स वेरी सिंपल ऑब्जर्वेशन सपोज आई टेक पी एंड क्यू वन प्रपोजिशन Now, how do I decide whether this is true or false? Well, first thing is P and Q is true if both of them are true, right? So I just construct a tree. If P and Q both are true, then P and Q will be true. Okay? So we just take P or Q. A similar construction. P or Q will be true if at least one of them is true, right? So I have now two cases. Just the way we did from our childhood. Huh? Okay, there are two cases. One of the cases will succeed. Then I say that P or Q is true. Fine. So I'll branch into two parts. P, Q. I just keep it. I don't know what will happen to this P or Q, but this can happen, right? So this gives a method how to proceed. But this says that preliminary conversion is required. For and and or, okay, but we will not do that way. What we will do is we will try to identify the forms of propositions. Propositions can be in which form? Suppose all the connectives are used. Then let's see what can be the forms of the propositions. Okay, this is required because by De Morgan, say I have not of P and Q. Though I know P and Q is true, when both of them are true, I can make a tree. With both P and Q in the same path, right? But if it is not P and Q, I know it is equivalent to not P or not Q. Now, if it is equivalent to not P or not Q, then I should have branched out with one as not P, another as not Q, which says not of P and Q is true if one of these is true. Okay? So now you see. Even if and is there, because of negation sign, some proposition can be just and of something, or negation of and of something. Similarly, from each connective, other four connectives, you'll get eight such cases. Right? A proposition can be in that form, or negation of that form. Is it okay? And then we have top and bottom, so we have to do something for that. We have double negation, so it can be not not. Many nots can be there. Right? So recursively, we should have a rule for not not also. Fine. So this is expanding propositions in such a fashion is called a tabula. You go on finding the table, how it is going, finding out the cases when it can be true and so on. So these types of trees are called Bethe's semantic trees. So semantically, we are just computing a tree, making a tree, finding out what are the possibilities when it can be true. Right? Proposition at the root can be true when. That is what the trees answer. These trees have been modified to make a proof method. That's what we are going to present. Okay, so this tabula will have certain rules basing on the forms of the propositions. So I'll just write the rules first. Let's see. So we'll have rules of this form. If it is in the form not not, you get p. And again, we'll write in this fashion uh, fractions. So this means if not not p is there, this will be true. If p is true, semantically it looks like that. But when you construct a true proof system, it can be semantically motivated, but 
but there is no trace of semantics there right it is mechanical that is what we want to make just like your PC. So, we will just construct them as rules now think of them as rules forgetting the semantics whenever needed we will connect them right. So, now if it is in the form not top we can write bottom ok. Now, if it is P and Q we will have P we will have also Q ok. If it is not of P and Q then we will have two children one is not P another is not Q ok. If it is P or Q we have again two children ok this can be written as a fraction we just write this way ok. When you construct the tabula we will be connecting by trees. Then P or Q we will have P as one child Q as the other child right. See if you do not like the fractions you can simply connect by uh, vertical bars or slanted bars huh? does not matter. Next we have not of P or Q which will be not P not Q both are in the same path right. Next we may have P implies Q which will have again two children one is not P another is Q see the semantics P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. Next you have not of P implies Q which is equivalent to P and not Q right. So, we will have P not Q in the same path. Next if and only if P by conditional Q this is true when both of them are true or both of them are false. So, we will keep in one branch P Q both another branch not P not Q ok. Then negation of P if and only if Q. So, that is equivalent to either P or Q right exclusive R ok. So, this is true when one is true the other is false. So, that gives rise to P not Q not P Q these are all the tabular rules any provision can be in these forms or there can be another form like bottom only. So, you have to give somewhere this rule you have to take care of that how only bottom can be handled ok that is only missing here fine. <coughs> now, as it says as our heuristic says if a proposition is given we are going to apply the tabular rules and then branch out construct the tree. So, construct the tree as big as you can huh? as far as you can go continue after the construction what are you going to decide right that is the point where we have to write something about the rule how to use the rules that we know now for the construction of the tree for the expansion. Then after you expand what are you going to decide well it is also easy for example, I take P and not P I know this is to be unsatisfiable fine. So, now, for the tabular rule it gives me P not P both right. So, semantically it says in order that this will be true this will be evaluated to 1 both P and not P should be evaluated to 1 which is not possible right. So, as a child if it is not possible I will cross it right it is not possible. So, this is what we are going to introduce in the tabula. If in a path in a tabula you find that there are two complementary pair of literals there is a pair of complementary literals then you close that path with a cross right provided you have applied the tabula rules on every uh, situation wherever it is applicable then you will end in literals. But you may not end in literals if you end in a proposition P and also its negation it is also fine whatever way you expand they will close right is that clear. For example, let us see say I have P or Q and not of P or Q 
Okay. Then once I apply the tabular rule, it will give me P or Q and again not of P or Q. Okay. Now, not of P or Q gives me not P, not Q okay. and P or Q gives me P, Q as different children. Okay. Now, I see the path. The path you can see either from a root to leaf or from leaf to root, does not matter. Let us take root to leaf as usual. So, in this path, I see that P is there, not P is there. So, this path closes. Okay. In the other path, I see not Q is there, Q is there, so that also closes. Now, the question is why should I go this far? I have already got the proposition U and not U. So, whatever way I expand they will close right. So, this is the shortcut we will be going to make. Instead of going to the level of literals, whenever you find a proposition and its negation stop there, close the branch. Is it okay? So, why we did not have a rule for the bottom? This is what we are going to write. If you find in a path a proposition or its negation, you close it. Or if you find in a path bottom is occurring, close it. Because that will tell you that in order that the propositions in that path are true, bottom should be true. It can never be. So, that path also closes. Right? So, there we are tackling this bottom. All others are given the rules. So, our rule will be if in a path you get a proposition, its negation. Okay, that is one case. Second case is if you find a bottom, then close the path. Okay. So now suppose you take a proposition and construct a tabula for it using the tabular rule. You see that every path closes. Then what do you conclude? It is unsatisfiable, right? If every path doesn't close, huh? Huh. See, from the beginning itself, I could have told P and not P is satisfiable. I do not expand it, right? I become lazy. P and not P, I do not expand it, I keep there. Okay. Now, this is also a table of a definition. It is open, it is not closed, so it should be satisfiable, but that is not the case, right? So, that means to take a decision that one open path really gives rise to a model which will make it satisfiable right you have to see that all the compound propositions have been expanded so compound means all those propositions in the forms of the numerators in our rules right they are the compound propositions so you should have applied a rule on the compound propositions in that path if it is done still the tabula remains open then it will be satisfiable, right? So we have to make certain definitions for all these situations huh, to take care of the situations. Then it can start, fine. Right? So let's give a definition. Whatever we need here. First thing is, you have the tabular rules. Then you have to say how to expand the tabula. Okay. So there. <coughs> A proposition at the root <coughs> of a tabula can give rise to a tabula. So, this is a cryptically written. Huh? It says start from a proposition, <coughs> then apply the rules if it is compound and continue. Huh? That is what it says recursively, right. But then there is one simple uh, cousin there. The cousin is this just look at the tabula we have constructed here. From the third proposition, we got to not P and not Q. Instead of the third, suppose I go for the second. 
so what will happen i have p or q i have not of p or q now i first apply or rule okay so i would get p another as q now i want to apply this ah see that that is the point right that's a subtle point while you are completing the uh, going for the tabula expansion once you take one proposition at the top level which is beyond all these branchings and you want to apply tabula rule on that then you have to add on every leaf right because tabula are expanded pathwise we have to concentrate on each path because we are going for a construction of a model along that line right so in programming it can be easy because you can expand all these things pathwise continue if it doesn't close you stop there if it closes you backtrack right that can be done but while doing it manually usually you apply it breadth first way not this way pathwise so once you do breadth first way be careful about that if you apply a rule you will think that i have already applied but that is guaranteed if you have added in every branch right so once we this has been used let's take it i have not used it to use this i have to add not p not q in both the branches this is what it says now you can see all the paths will be the same same literal here same literal also here is it clear okay so now you have to define all these things formally so a tabula is expanded or is constructed pathwise in a path rules are applied on the compound propositions so in this sense the tabula rules are really tabula expansion rules how to expand the tabula fine so that's how it is constructed throughout sometimes you need not have to construct the whole tabula somewhere you find p and not p is there for some proposition you close it so there is no need to go for that fine but if you want to go for that then we should give a name for that kind of tabula right so you say that a path is so path means path from root to leaf wherever you are now what is your leaf current leaf so path is called closed if it contains p and also not p for some proposition p or it contains bottom otherwise we say the path is open so this open and closed they are dynamic up to some level a path can be open but once you apply another so one of its paths can be closed right even both of them can become closed later right so it is a dynamic thing a path is called complete called complete if it can no more be expanded right so that means on each of the compound propositions occurring in that path a rule has been applied right so if on each compound proposition occurring in that path a tabula expansion rule has been applied
see sometimes you say I do not have to complete the path, I can take decision before it. Okay. So, we will also include one term for that, we will say that a path is completed if it is closed or it is complete. So, that means it is essentially complete, right? nothing can be done for it. You know it is closed, you have decided for it or it remains open, nothing more can be done by using the tabula expansion rules. So, in fact, we wanted this completed path to take any decision. Right? Then we come for the tabula itself, okay, let us leave it here. Okay. A tabula is closed if all its paths are closed. This is what should give us one unsatisfiable proposition at the root. Okay. Similarly, we say a tabula is complete if all its paths are complete, not one, complete. Everywhere compound propositions have been resolved, right? they have been expanded. And similarly, we say tabula is completed if all its paths are completed. Right. So, closed or complete or completed. All these go. Now comes the next one. A tabula is open if here you require that. Huh? if at least one of its paths is open, not every, right. You do not need every, right. If at least one of its paths is open. Okay. So, for taking decision whether it is satisfiable, you may need an open completed tabula, right. It should be completed. If it is not complete, but only open, your decision cannot be taken. It can still be further expanded and found to be closed. Okay. So, you need a completed tabula for that. Then we should define the uh, syntactic part of all those things. We cannot say satisfiable or unsatisfiable here, because it has nothing to do with the truth or falsity. Though it is semantically motivated, but as a proof system it may not have any semantic content. Fine. So, a tabula for a proposition W is a tabula with root as w. So, you have to define everything almost. Huh? So, once you say a tabula for a proposition that means, you start the tabula with the root as w, then continue expanding it. Fine. Similarly, you can say a tabula for a set of propositions. say sigma e j tabula with all propositions of sigma at the root okay Now, we define a theorem, a tabula theorem or we say propositional tabula. 
okay, P T for proportional tabula is a okay, we can say what is a P T. Huh? We start with a proposition. We say W is a P T theorem if what happens? If there exists a closed tabula for not W. Now, you see reductio ad absurdum is inbuilt in the definition. Okay. You start with not W, then expand it, find that tabula closes. See, a tabula may not be unique, it depends on which order you are using the rules, it can become very different. Okay. So, all that you need is there exists a closed tabula. Fine. Then, similarly, for a set of propositions. We say that sigma is inconsistent. In fact, you should write P T inconsistent. Okay. Inconsistent in the system P T. If there exists a closed tabula. for sigma. Okay. Start with all the propositions at the root and then continue using tabula expansion rules, see that closes, if it closes you say that it is inconsistent. Okay. Now, similarly you say sigma entails in P t w. Right. So, if sigma union not w is inconsistent, p t inconsistent. Right. So, inconsistent here means p t. So, slowly since you have become matured, we will forget this p t always writing. Huh? We will say inconsistent are theorem and so on. Once we are in the context of tabula, it will be interpreted as tabula consistence, not P C consistent. Okay, let us see one example at least, huh? how to show something is inconsistent or not. Okay. So, let us see whether this happens or not. In fact, you should have P t here right, as a subscript, in P t only we are deciding. So, that means, sometimes we will say that uh, sigma entails w has a tabula proof okay, that is also used. Now, how to proceed? We simply start with sigma union not w. Okay. So, P implies not Q implies R, P implies not Q, not of P implies R. So, often we write independent propositions vertically, because we want to apply the rules, right. So, they will be on the same path. So, it is more logical to start with vertical things, then comma and then write it. Okay, now, you have to apply the rules. Huh? See, I want to apply rule on this first. Why? If I start from this, then it will branch out from the beginning. Okay. Then every branch I have to add this. If I start with this one, it will be stucking, it is not branching, so it will be helpful. Okay. So, in all those rules, wherever you get two children, they are called the branching rules, others are called the stucking rules. 
they are just tucking the propositions one after another, the other ones are branching out. So, now it is helpful as a heuristic that if there is a choice go for the stacking rules instead of the branching rules okay, that will make the tabula shorter. So, now if I apply not implies rule we can give a name to all the rules now. Let us call this rule as not not because that is the form of the proposition we will be meeting this one will be not top this is and this is not and this is or this is not or similarly this is implies this is not implies this is biconditional this is not biconditional that says the form of the proposition directly also. Now, if I apply not implies rule it gives me P not R is that right. Next which one well I can go middle one instead of this that will again branch out. Huh? So, this gives implies rule I use that gives what. So, it is often easier for you if you go on a book keeping device. See once I use this I tick it ok, it will not come further. Then what about P implies not Q? It will branch out to not P not Q ok. Now, I close it instead of applying this I will close it here, because I have already got P and not P in this path. So, I close it and on this not Q the other path not q not r p and so on I have one on which I have not applied a rule right double expansion rule. So, this I have to apply implies rule. So, that gives me not p and then not q implies r ok. Again in this path I find not p not q not r p ok. So, p and not p are there so, that path also closes. Then I look at not q implies r all the things have been used in this path there is another compound proposition where I have not used the rule. So, I branch out to not not q and r ok. If you use double negation it will go to q, but I do not need that I have not q here not not q here you can further take q, but does not matter so, that also closes and here not r and r they also close ok. So, it is closed therefore, the set of propositions is inconsistent, but we do not have to say that we just say this is proved by tabula method because our definition says if there is a closed tabula for all sigma and not w that we have taken directly ok. Now, as an exercise you can try all the axioms of P c and M p also ok, see how do they go in tabular rules. So, slowly you should get acquainted with this very quickly you can decide what happens that helps. Huh? So, today only we have done tabula now we have done also completeness of PC and compactness right and then the tabular rules. So, we will discuss again tabulas next time maybe.